Yo, what is up, G Crew? I'm Chris G, bringing you guys another video, and today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to mask like Sam Colder. So, without further ado, let's get started. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little intro that was shot at the aquarium towards Leon Valley area. So if you haven't been there, it's pretty cool. I enjoyed myself. I went with Kristen. So she's actually going to be making a full video on the aquarium. So I'll probably link her YouTube channel down below in the description. So be sure to check that out. But without further ado, guys, let's get started with the actual tutorial. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go make a new sequence, which I already did and we're gonna import the files that we want. So in this case, right, I have this PNG file of a fish, and then I also have this shot of um, these fish, and then I have this shot as well. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put this to 100%, this to 100% as well, and all of this needs to be normal. So this looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna play it just so you can see it's those clips okay i uh, got those two clips from the footage that you saw earlier and then i'll show you guys exactly how i got this png file so first thing we're going to do is actually delete this mask and you'll see that it's actually a part of an image that i screenshotted so when i was recording i went on premiere and then what you can do is right here there's a little snapshot button so all you do is press on it and you save it as a jpeg or png whatever you want and um this is pretty much what i got so now that I like got a screenshot of it, um, I want to mask it out. I want to get exactly what I want. So in order to do this, all you have to go is where it says opacity. First, you got to select the clip. So you'll notice, you'll know when it's selected if it's highlighted. So you'll notice here on the timeline that each one is highlighted each time I click it. So this is the footage I want to click. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to where it says opacity. We're going to get this pen tool and we're actually going to make markings all around it. So all you have to do it's click, 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 and then go all around it. So I already did that, so I'm not gonna necessarily do that. So all I have to do really is hit Control Z, and it'll bring back my mask. So once you're done with it, the mask should look something like this. And um, yeah, I mean, pretty much this is all you want from that frame. And the next step is pretty much just animating it. So something to note on masking is, let's say for example, you're gonna replace a monitor screen um, back in, I think about a month or two ago, I made a video on photo shoot ideas at home. So I actually did this transition where I replaced my laptop screen going into what you would see now. And um, it came out pretty cool. And the way I did that was masking. So another thing with math masking is you'll notice we selected what we wanted, but we can also select what we don't want. So doing that is just hitting inverted right here and it pretty much does that for you so masking does two things for you so you just have to choose which one you want so that's that which is very useful so now that we have that selected all we have to do is actually do the transition so all we're gonna do now is we're gonna move this up top right here and then we're gonna put these two um, frames right here like so so this is what it is right it's nice and quick pretty simple so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this fish thing it's a little fishy here and um, we're gonna blend it in so I already I already uh, color graded it to match it so this is another thing to note is whenever you're trying to use this type of masking like Sam Colder because um, masking like Sam Colder's I know is very difficult so always try to go the extra mile even when you think uh, I don't want to it's too much work or I don't want to put in the extra work because you know it's already good enough go the extra step because I know Sam Colder does that for sure on all of his clips and that's why every single clip even if it's one second half a second a millisecond it's so good because he goes the extra step so I color graded it already and you'll notice you know when the lumetri colors you'll see how it's colored and everything but yeah anyway what we want to do is we want to keyframe it so we're gonna go to between and we're gonna go one two just like two frames is more than enough and then the other two frames will be there so right now what I'm gonna do 
is I'm gonna move the fish by going on the positioning once I've highlighted what I wanted to mess with and I'm gonna move it to the left and before I do that actually I want to make sure that the fish covers up the whole screen so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the scale and um, and that should be good like right there is fine so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the fish to the right and you want it to make sense so the fish are moving from right to left so I want the fish that I'm creating to move right to left as well sometimes you can change the direction I know Sam Colder does that very few times but it kind of leans leads into the new direction that it's going uh, for the next clip so what we're gonna do is now that the fish is all the way to the right we're gonna keyframe it by hitting this little clock button so that'll make a keyframe a keyframe those of you that don't know still is pretty much what um, you're telling something right in this case the fish the position you're telling the position of you know point a and then you change the point B and then the time in between it and uh, yeah it makes sense when I do it I, I did a really bad job of explaining it so I apologize but uh, yeah, so there's that. And then I'm gonna move more keyframes, right? So I'm gonna do four, which is like that. And then I'm gonna move the fish all the way to the left, like this. So now when I play it, the little fishy moves all the way across. But you'll notice that the fish is just there. So what you can do, is you can add some motion blur to it. So I don't know if I have motion blur on it. No, I don't. So all you have to do is you go to your effects wherever they are and you type in directional motion blur or directional blur, sorry. And you just search for it and then you see how much it is. You're like, oh, damn, that's a lot. So you're like, no, I don't need that much. And then you want it to be 90 degrees because that's how it's moving. I think you want it. Okay, for this case, it's 107 because I remember I rotated the, the image to get it um, straight. So that's that. So now when you see it, it looks a lot more realistic. And you can go even further as well by masking the this right here, the, the purple clip. So if I hide this layer, you'll see that this clip has already started. And you can see it's already right here on this side. So what we can do is we can go the extra mile, right? Like I've been talking to you guys about, and we can actually go and make another mask. So we can have what we want in the clip. So I'm, I'm gonna go to 10% and I'm gonna say, okay, well, I want this, right? I want this part of the clip. And we're gonna keyframe it. Remember keyframing guys is super key. So I'm gonna amp the feather into like 80 and then I'm gonna keyframe the path and then once the fish is gone, right? I'll probably just put it right there while it's still there. Um, just cause I don't want to mess it up too badly. So you, you gotta make sure that you're clicking on the right keyframes guys. Cause if you mess up, you're going to be done for. So there you go. Just that little bit makes it so much better. Uh, so much more realistic. So now if we back out of this, put it to fit so that we can actually see what we're messing with. Um, you'll notice. What the? Oh, that was a fail. What happened to you? Oh, I'm really confused. Okay, so this does happen sometimes, guys, and this is just something you gotta be careful with. Um, if ever you're masking and something's just not going your way, I notice that it gets kind of buggy with keyframes whenever you mess with the speed duration. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete the mask real quick. Um, just like so. And you notice it worked or whatever, but we're just gonna get rid of it. So the way you get rid of it is you just delete it. So I don't know why it's not getting rid of it. So instead of restarting, you know, this program or whatever, I'm actually just gonna control Z this until the mask is gone. So it is gone. And um, yeah, so. I'm gonna nest this clip and the reason why I wanna nest it is because it will make it its own clip. So nesting can be intimidating for someone that doesn't know what it is. It's like, what is nesting? That sounds weird, but it's actually quite simple. It's not as difficult as you may think. So pretty much it just allows you to make it as if it's a new clip. Like if it's, it's ah, as if it is its own clip. Holy crap, that is intense. 
All right, so pretty much we're gonna mask it again, right? Because it acted up on us, so it's pretty simple and nothing too difficult, guys. Like I said, just do that, select it, increase the feathering just to make it blend better. Keyframing the um, path, and we're actually gonna have it here. And then it's literally just one frame, I think. I don't even know, but yeah. So we're just gonna move it here. Man, Premiere is not working with me today, guys. All right, so we're gonna save it just so if anything crashes, we're still good. So you'll notice that there's black on the fish. So what we gotta do here is we got to uh, move these two keyframes over one. All right, so it works perfectly like that. So it blends in a lot better and it's a lot cleaner. So that's pretty much the effect guys. Um, if you want it to look a little bit more clean and a little bit better, what you can do is duplicate the uh, the fish and just have more. So this obviously works, right? So if I play it, it works good. But if you want just that extra spice, you can actually duplicate this layer and bring it up top and you can, you know, change the sizing of it or whatever. What I did was I pretty much just moved it one keyframe ahead of it. So now we have two fish and I just changed the scale of it. And um, and then, yeah, I mean, I lowered it a little bit. So let's see. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. So then when you play it, you get two fish and it looks a little bit better. So I don't know, that's just me. It looks cooler that way. Um, but yeah, let's just check out what the actual finished product looks like It's pretty simple. Honestly, it's not difficult at all um, But yeah, well guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it You know teaching you guys this long tutorial was definitely fun So far we learned how to mask and keyframe in this video So that is definitely gonna help out in your transitions. So hopefully it gets a lot better um, Let me know if this video helped you at all or if it didn't please let me know what I could have done better um, I also made a Sam Colder transition video for clouds on how to put fake clouds onto your videos to make it more dynamic. So if you haven't already, go to my YouTube channel, check it out. I have a bunch of tutorials there. Tutorials? That's a really weird word. Anyway, um, but yeah guys, hopefully you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching this. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Peace.